Uh, welcome back to episode four of the Say What Podcast, the UK's number one fastest growing podcast in the world. <laughs> so yeah, it's fantastic to be back. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Yeah. And what is today? If you're still ep- here after episode three, then you're a real one. Yes. Because that was nasty. So today's episode, which one are we going to be discussing? Which topic? Topic, I think a really important topic to talk about is mental health. Overall mental health also gives some advice on what we've learned through our own mental health challenges, anything along that broad subject. And I think mental health is, it's not really a thing where it's like, oh, she, she suffers with mental health or he suffers with mental health. It's everybody has a mental health. And it's, you know, it's we, progressive and ongoing. Yeah. And we, we all have a mental health and it's whether it's feeling positive, negative, somewhere in between. And obviously mental health is something that just like life, it's up and down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, you learn to deal with it in your own ways. But I think as well, some people don't really understand that maybe some things are like down to mental health. And so they don't like deal with them and stuff. So maybe we can give some advice in that way because we are people who want to be better and want to grow. Yeah. And when we are facing like challenges with mental health, we we do want to get out of feeling like that, don't we? Yeah. Even when we're just in like funks ourselves, we don't like to stay there. No. I don't think anybody does. No. Um, unless you're in like some deep self-sabotage, which we've all been there as well. 100%. So yeah, I just thought we could offer some advice and also talk about like what we both struggle with personally, because you've got things that you struggle with and have challenges with and that you've had challenges with since you were younger that perhaps people wouldn't even really know. Mm. Haven't you? <laughs> What's wrong with it? What's wrong with I me? mean, you've got 99 problems. <laughs> <laughs> and your mental health is one. Well, I thought I was all right. What's wrong with my mental health since <laughs> no. I was a child? No. No, I, I'm saying that in jest. I completely understand what you're completely saying. Completely in jest. And um, yeah. So what would you like to first start with? Well, I think we could talk about your eating disorder because I don't think that's something that people even really put down to like men as such. Yeah, that's a good topic actually. Like when you think about eating disorder, I don't know whether anybody else would agree, but I would automatically think like a woman with an eating disorder, Mm. you wouldn't naturally think a man with an eating disorder. And an eating disorder can be, I mean, I am not somebody with all of the facts, so please don't you know, quote me on anything here. There's people with, who know so much more about this kind of um, very sensitive subject, much more than I. But, you know, an eating disorder can be more than just somebody who doesn't want to eat. It can be somebody who overeats. Um, there's, it's such a broad subject. It can be so many different things. So I think it would be really good mm, for you to speak yeah, about yours. Yeah, I would say and... as well, like most, most, I would say, I would say the majority of the world usually say that the well not an issue but they would have an issue with overeating yeah i'm someone who under eats and everyone's always like oh i wish i wish i could you know that's what i wish whereas i'm always like i wish i would eat you know there is also a lot of people out there who wish they could be the opposite who would yeah that's just what you say isn't it but yours is yours is comes more from a, a um it's not a not wanting no so yeah i'll explain from the beginning really so basically when i was sort of younger and growing up i never really had much of an appetite anyway so i was always a small child or small kid um always the shortest in like the class or the year or whatever and then i was skinny to go along with that because i didn't like eating i was always very active and um so that was you know Growing up, that was kind of a little bad recipe. And you'd obviously have comments and stuff when you're doing PE or swimming or whatever. What, I was literally What are years, some of the comments that you would have got? Basically just how skinny I, um, I was. I had it from a very young age, from like primary school all the way through. I would expect it more at like high school and college and so on because you're all sort of developing into adults. And, you know, you, you come a bit more sort of like, you know, cocky and judgmental at that age, don't you? When you're a teenager. Mm. Um, but I, I was way, way skinny, way small, r- way back as much as I can remember. And then the, but that wasn't necessarily an eating disorder. 
in any way. That was basically just a case of, I just didn't have an appetite. So how maybe you, you had a big appetite and then yours would be quite opposite. Um, you and I would get picked on for being, for being fat. Over, yeah, that was just, mm. mine was just that I just didn't want to eat. I didn't like eating. Um, and, and that was just sort of where it was at. I just literally hated it. I remember always being at school and when you ha- when I had the school dinners and so on, I would literally eat nothing, or hardly anything, and then the teachers would sit there and try and make you eat it. And mm-hmm. there, there's nothing more destro- like destroying than that. It's just horrible. Um, and it's not their fault. I mean, I just couldn't eat it. Yeah. So, And then when I was about 13 or 14, I started to eat. And what I noticed is all the food would get stuck in my throat. And I remember the, literally the first time it happened and the first few times it happened. And then it was making me be sick. So I was like, what on earth's going on here? So it, it sent me into like, um, I would then have to eat really, really small. So I couldn't swallow normal size foods. In because the you were fear. putting it down to the size at this point. Yeah, so I would say swallow, and it, the, at the time it was down to the size. So I would eat something normal size, let's say you chew it a couple of times, swallow it. It was getting stuck, and then it was just uh, coming back up, and it was making me be sick. So I was obviously like, what on earth's going on here? I would say now as well, you've got more options. You could go on the internet, and you can Google, and loads more i know you, you really can didn't go know to what was going on i didn't then. really know what was going on back then um and my parents didn't really know either um and even the doctors we went to the doctors and so on and and they 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 kind of thought it was um sort of mental they thought it was a mental aspect which turns out it wasn't so basically i'll sort of cut this down i was then having to eat really really small and i was having to take a swig of water with literally every single meal I had so not only did I struggle to eat an appetite I was now taking it physically yeah and I did a test once I went to see the doctor and she said can you time yourself eating uh, a McDonald's I had a McDonald's cheeseburger literally just a cheeseburger and it took me over 45 minutes to oh, eat f- one cheeseburger and I had like eight tubs of sauce and I remember after time in that I was like that ain't right. So it's got to give. That isn't right, is it? I was so upset after that because I was like, yeah. that. I, I actually always thought I ate slowly, but once you actually knew it. <laughs> I definitely it, confirmed it. You were like, oh my God. It, it was awful. It was awful. And basically, what happened over the years, and there was just nothing for it. And what would also happen is I would then start to. I, I would eat food and it would make me sick. So then I I still have this now, don't I? I don't yeah. I don't eat uh, like out in public with other people other than Tay. Very there's, rarely, there's, there's, yeah, rarely. very rarely because I've got it under control now because it was a simple solution which I'll get to in the end. But basically, before I had this solution, I never knew when I was going to be sick, and certain foods didn't do it. Like if I had like. I don't know, a cheese sandwich or something, it wouldn't make me sick. I'd just worked out. But if I had, I don't know, something else, it would like a highly steak. likely, yeah, steak. I was highly likely going to be sick. So then I've had numerous, I would say I've probably had 30 or 50 times where I've probably, I don't even know, probably 100 times where I've actually been sick in a restaurant from... And you've and been quite out, a few times have happened been, and you've been you out, as well. And you've been out on a date, haven't you? And you were sick. Yeah, I've literally been like on dates, everything. I've been gone to the toilet and it's got stuck. And the issue is you get like 20 sec- 10, 20 seconds to get to the toilet or it's coming out. Yeah, there's and a lot of times where you, you've been like... Yeah, it just... And then you just have to run upstairs. So yeah. I kept on going to the doctors to try and find out what was going on. And eventually they basically just put a camera down my throat um, cause I was convinced for years and years that my throat was closed. I was convinced that the throat was not a size of a normal throat. I tested it. I even swatted like a baked bean once. And I was <laughs> honestly a, a baked bean. How, how pathetic does that sound? I swallowed one whole to see how wide my throat was. And I remember I was being sick for literally like 10 hours literally no joke from no i know that's not a joke like eight at night till like six in the morning when you start being sick 
it goes on for hours. Yeah, it goes on for hours. Sometimes so it, it can be a really quick one and then sometimes you, you could be in the toilet all night. Yeah, it's the most strangest thing in the world. So basically you, you be sick and then what happens is how your, I would say your throat sends food down. So you, it's like a muscle and it's sending food down. So you swallow it and it's getting assistance sending the food down. Once this makes me be sick, it has it tries to send the food up mm. and with that it's like sending like acid up it's just yeah, sending bad whatever. acid reflux don't you? um and basically if i swallow a glass of you know a glass of water at that point it will go down it will get stuck water so it's you know it's clearly not getting stuck and my body would then make the water be sick so it's a real strange strange scenario um and basically i had a fr- um a camera down my throat to assess what was going on and then I've had a camera probably three times now and I have it maybe every five years where basically what they've realized is this there's like a a valve at the bottom of my throat that relaxes and stays open so normally food's supposed to go in the valve opens lets the food in and then closes whereas my valve stays open so that allows all of your stomach acid to go back up your throat and then what happens there is the acid is then burning the bottom of your throat and it's creating a scar tissue. So ultimately, your throat is a quarter of the size of a normal throat because of all the scar tissue. Mm. So then when they put a camera down your throat, they can also do a little sort of trick where they blow up a balloon and try and widen your throat. And then I basically just take uh, strong tablets that... um, puts like um, an alkaline on top of your stomach acid so that it that you can um, basically eat normal mm. um and uh, yeah i would say it's managed <clears throat> i'm probably like 99 percent of their managed now it happens probably what like three times a year um yeah, mainly if i forget to take my tablets now, it, it? Re- it rarely happens but what it's created for you is a it's, it's a bit of an anxiety around and food. now it's now mental it's like an ang- it's something you've anchored. If you don't know what anchor it anchoring is, or when you say it's, you've anchored it, it's when something's happened so many times, you're just kind of convinced that it's always going to happen. It's like stuck in your head that yeah. this is how it's always going to be, kind of thing. And you have that anchor around socially eating yeah. now, don't so you? So now I eat to eat in front of other people. I am it gives me instant anxiety. Yeah. I can barely eat i just don't eat most people say i've never even seen you eat and that's mm. because i never if i was to go when out when we're together yeah together we are it's absolutely normal and it's fine and i do and i do eat i mean i don't have a massive appetite still i'm always uh constantly trying to gain weight but yeah it's still something that i have a challenge with and i think yeah i you know it's a strange one isn't it like it's yeah. not it's not yeah. a very i don't think it's very common i've never really heard anyone have no, this kind I've of not. problem but i think it also it's nice to hear what other people find challenging because i think a lot of us have very similar challenges but then some of us have challenges that like are like that where it's like oh, i would have never like someone might you know someone might sometimes or at some point say a throwaway comment like god you're looking a bit skinny aren't you or oh yeah. you're you've lost some weight and yeah. they to or why you know why you're not eating I, everywhere I go growing up was like why are you not eating you've you've had hardly anything which is so true those you. words used to just Trigger literally you. make me die inside yeah like you're not eating can't get some food down yeah. you but oh, for oh. you know someone Bitch. especially in the day of social media someone could say God her boyfriend's so skinny or God Jack's really thin. Or something like that. <laughs> no, I and wouldn't it, say I'm skinny now. Oh, I'm you're slim, slim. definitely. You're but slim. compared to how I was, no. But God. what I'm no, but what I'm trying to say is, someone could say that, but they have no idea of like the challenge behind yeah, your yeah, slimness. Yeah, I understand that yeah. because you know you don't you, you're not somebody who has a huge appetite, but you're also somebody who actually physically finds it challenging to eat sometimes. Yeah, well, it basically all it's done now is I. Uh, will always try to eat as small as possible, right? Which then takes so much longer to eat your food. Mm-hmm. So you then f- get full. Yeah. By the time you've even finished your food, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas most people waffle it down. They, 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 their hunger's still there. 
like me. <laughs> yeah, which is quite we funny. Are, we're the total we are, opposites. Because we're absolute opposites. Yeah. You love food. I All hate my life, food. I've been, you know, I spoke about this on my Instagram the other day. I've been the fat sister. You know, I, my mum, uh, my two sisters, very naturally slim. You know, I eat peanut and I can see it. <laughs> they can <laughs> eat whatever they want and it's not a problem. I, you know, unfortunately was blessed with my dad's metabolism and, you know, my dad's build. And, um, and they, they weren't blessed with that. Uh, so, and all my life I've actually had the opposite where I've used food as a comfort and I've always, you know, even from such a young age, I remember like I'd, I'd have finished my sandwich and I'd be like, oh, I want another one, which, you know, most children wouldn't be like, you know, be like, oh, why have I got to eat? I'd be thinking in my head, like, how can I get another sandwich? Like I, I want another sandwich. Or like I'd be like secret eating. I'd be going in the kitchen when other people weren't there and eating. I don't know what it was because I can't think of something that I was like triggered by in my childhood that made me want to like mask things with food. Because obviously I've tried to be like go back and figure out where it's kind of come from. But it, you know, I all my life has suffered with binge eating where you know, for the, I'd say the past two or three years, I've not been, maybe two years, I've not been a real bad binge eater, have I? But I could go on a rampage where I could just keep eating and eating and eating and would never feel full to the point where I feel sick. Then I, you know, feel awful about myself and, you know, sabotage and go through these kind of spirals. And I've really got it into control into the last uh, two years. Don't get me wrong. I still eat and I'll still eat a lot of the wrong foods and stuff, but I won't like gouge myself like i like i used to but Mm. it's just so funny that you were called skinny i was called like who ate all the pies yeah i loved food and was trying not like why i love food so much i know i I cannot believe how much of a parallel universe of a school that you were the one uh, you know, I you know, if we were the people a, that if were If we were at school together, down. you could have been feeding me your food. Yeah, we would have been <laughs> best friends. We would have. <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah that's, uh, I can't believe that, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's funny that we're total opposites and we're still like that now. But you do, you know, you can really sometimes really look forward to your food. Yeah, definitely. You just have to really be in the mood for it. Whereas I look forward to every meal. And yeah, even it, when I'm enjoying one meal, I'm waiting. That's like, something we sort of sussed out. Like, let's say we go on holidays or, you know, you're trying to find out what makes the other person happy so that you can both have a good trip and so on. Like, Jackson. mine is always just, you know, get taste some really good food, some nice food, sort the food first, and then she's content. You know, I can then do my thing, which is so funny because... I guess normally the bo- the couples are both like, oh, let's go get some food. Whereas literally, I'm like, You're not this is food for me. Food is just a it's waste, a chore. a chore, and it's a waste of my day. I actually forget that I've not eaten. I'm like, oh, I've not eaten, and it's like I just cannot food. imagine forgetting to eat. Like today, I would say I've had a cup of tea, and I I, I don't even think I've had any food the whole day. I've not actually had. <laughs> I could list mine, but I'm not. Today, no, I'm not today I've not. So I will get some food down me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there are obviously some challenges. Um, I'd say my main challenge, because I'd say that's your main Yeah, I would say anxiety. a really good talk to go about is about like anxiety that you suffered. Um, is it the word suffered? That you, you were- My social anxiety. You were having whilst we were in um, Spain. Spain. Yeah. Which I think is a yeah I, I've spoke about this and this is something I'm like really really open with um I would say naturally I don't want to say naturally I am like an introverted extrovert where when I'm comfortable when I know people when I'm in an environment environment that I feel safe I'm the loudest person in the room aren't I 100%. I'm the joker I want to make everyone laugh I want to make everyone have a good time I don't mind being the center of attention like telling a joke or telling a story you know I can be in my element in that way and that's who I am when I'm with my family and you know this obviously selected there's like friends and people that we really know and and whatnot but then if I'm put in an environment where I'm going to an event or we're at a meal with you know, more friends, but not people that like know you inside out kind of thing. Or sometimes it can just be the environment and not even necessarily the people. I can be really introverted, shut off, not know what to say, not know how to start conversation and feel really stuck and feel really anxious. 
and like even thinking of the next thing to say whilst I'm talking and I can spiral in yeah. that way. And I would say I've been like that before I even met you. But then when we had the lockdown for like 18 months in Spain, which was a lot more of a lockdown than in the UK, obviously when coronavirus yeah. started. I mean, we were obviously stuck in a house where we really didn't see anybody else for 18 months because our family lived in the UK and like I said, it was a much stricter lockdown and we were in the house just used to, you know, being with one another. And then when we could go out again, I, my, it's not that I felt like my mind knew about it, but it was like my body was like, oh, it was like, oh my God, like you're going out into yeah. this world and now you've got to speak to people and you've got, and you know, I'd be, all my friends would in Spain would be like, let's do something like, let's go out now and let's do this because, you know, everything's over. And I'd be like having a panic attack, wouldn't I? Thinking, I don't want to see them. Yeah. I can't see them. Like there's this thing going with my body. And when I'd leave the house and when we'd get in the car, I'd go into this thing where I'd be like almost having a fit. And it would be like my, I, I wasn't in control of what my body was doing. And I could be sat in the car and we'd be driving somewhere and I'd be like unable to breathe and feeling like <sighs> I started to feel like maybe I've got epilepsy or something because like even certain lights or if we were going under remember that tunnel mm. I'd go into this tunnel and I'd have to shut my eyes because the lights and st everything would just start it was like I was yeah well I've heard that with um anxiety and panic attacks it can make you feel like you feel like you're having a heart attack or it can make you feel like you're having a stroke. Yeah. And it's all actually the mental yeah, aspect. aspect of what yeah. it's making you feel. And that's how you were. Because I remember you were going to get like your nails done. My eyelashes. Eyelashes. And then you'd got it. it I think you'd had a um, bit of a panic attack whilst you were there once. And then every time we then went, mm -hmm. I went, I was dropping Tay off. And then you couldn't get out of the car. You were crying literally mm. sat outside crying saying i can't go in there i can't go in there and it's literally just you know one nail lady or eyelash lady and you who you've met you know um, and in my head that it, was i would yeah. say was so scary at the time because i didn't think i was ever going to be and it, you know it went way beyond that we'd be going for meals and even when jack and i would be in an environment which wasn't home and we'd be sat at a table in a restaurant i would be like oh i once we've ordered the food I'd have to like get up and have a walk around and just wait for the food to come because I knew when the food was come my mind would be distracted by eating but if it was like a space where I, there wasn't a lot going on I'd think I'm gonna have a panic attack like it was such a bizarre time in my life it was scary wasn't it it because was really scary even times where me and you were sat down at the apartment and you said I have to go because you have an anxiety with me yeah you're like, I'm feeling really weird. I need, I need to chill out. Can I'm just gonna have my food on the sofa. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is scary mm. because you just basically had felt like you'd lost control of your own mind, yeah. which is the scariest thing in the world. I would yeah. say. That actually, actually makes me want to cry because it was honestly a time where I thought I, I'm actually never gonna feel how I normally felt before. Because it's not to say that that isn't normal, because that is some people's normal, but it's not how I normally felt before. And yeah. so I was like, how do I ever gain this control back where I don't feel like this? And like, even now, you know, I will, uh, there's certain situations I will just not put myself in, that situations where, you know, I would have put myself in before feeling like I, I have to do this. But now I'm just very conscious of what and where I feel comfortable. I think you definitely have to come outside your comfort zone in some areas, but in the some areas where I'm just like, I'm just not gonna put myself through that because I just know that I'm yeah. not comfortable with it. And I think one of them for us is going out for meals and <laughs> we're like, so like, yeah, we're not coming. <laughs> yeah. Because Most you don't really Most people now wanna... know that like anything to do with food or meals, they just know I'm probably gonna say no. Yeah. So people know, like, do you know what I mean? Once you tell people, people are okay with it. No it's a, one's and it's a bit of a shame it. because I love food and we do love, you know, seeing people sometimes. <laughs> well, the, mo the main thing that you do with other couples it's is you go for a meal, for a meal you might have a couple don't. of drinks, you might not, but the food is the sort of centre yeah. of good conversation. It's a great, it's actually like a really enjoyable thing to do, isn't it? It is, and I find myself in, found myself in situations after that lockdown where I would only be comfortable if I was drunk to see people. Like if it was like a drinking thing, 
I would get drunk and you know then I'd be fine I'd be the world's yeah, most confident that's person that's the same as me but then it got to a point where I was like I don't this isn't right I don't want to have to be drunk in order to socialize or see people it's just not right to, to be like that so then we were like okay I actually actually have to really work on this now and then you know I had life coaching and uh, I've read a lot of books yeah let's we've explained a couple of scenarios and things like that I would say one thing as well is I, I think it's everyone has certain moments where they are anxious or they're feeling slightly down maybe like and we still have them day everyone has day, that as like... an up and a down of a general life um that's just something that's always ongoing and mm. um different situations like you let's say I don't know you've got a work meeting or something that you don't normally do and that's going to give you you're going to feel slightly anxious I think that's like like normal that's and life. everyone has that I guess how do you define when it's a little bit more like oh I'm now having I anxiety think, I think when it's more depressed. constant well, I would say yeah when you if you're consistently down for long periods of time and or consistently feeling like you're in fight or flight which is how I felt yeah I constantly felt like I was in that you know when you like adrenaline kicks in and your heart's beating so fast and you can't actually uh, regulate your breathing. That's how I felt every single day. Yes, yeah. Fight or flight. Like I was, like I was, like something really bad had just happened, just but constantly. And I couldn't actually take normal breaths or just have calmness. So I read a, a lot of books, did life yeah, coaching. So, you found me the life coach. Yeah, so what sort of tips and advice do you think that we have for people that are struggling or is there anything that we could um yeah i think what the f- worked for you how did you get back to your sort of normal zone and i mean there's definitely still times where i f- i feel like that you know that leading up to going to uh molly's baby shower which we, you would have seen on my instagram name drop <laughs> no you know what i mean <laughs> this stuff because this is this, this is reality for me yeah. you know that to anybody else would be super super exciting You're meeting somebody who you love you know we've become really great friends and but for me, uh, you know, for since I knew I was invited to that, I was really anxious about it. And I actually thought for a while that I probably wouldn't go. I didn't tell her that. Um, but I just thought, you know, when it comes to it, I probably won't actually go. And it was because I was associating that with like the self of the part of me, the old me, where I'd had situations where I'd felt really anxious, really uncomfortable, Um, in like a social environment and I was thinking back to like my previous anchors of feeling that certain way and then bringing it into the new and so even I had you know a a life coaching call just a few days before just to give me a bit of a like okay this is how I deal with things this is how I can see these things and I had a really great time I didn't feel anxious I wasn't uncomfortable I was myself Um, but it's like it wasn't going there going there it was going into an unknown environment yeah. you know where i don't n- know people i think that's it quite would, natural it would be ways. the same yeah it would be the same if i was going to like you know i've never been one to ever i've never been to like an influencer kind of event um i've never been to a, like a, a pr event a brand event because i just avoid them because i would just think that's just not me i just wouldn't i wouldn't feel com- i wouldn't enjoy myself i'd actually the build up to it would be so unenjoyable for me. It's just not worth me going. Mm. And and a lot of people would say, oh, that's, you know, a really important part of like, you know, what you do or a small part of what I do, you know, connecting and networking and stuff. But my anxiety and uncomfortableness and awkwardness, if you like, is really held me back from doing those things. And, you know, some things I just wouldn't put myself through. Like I just wouldn't yeah. put myself through some of those things. But then there is certain situations uh, where I'm like, you know, I need I need to do this. I want to get out of my comfort zone. And then I feel really great after. Um, but the biggest thing for me was 100% getting life coaching because for me, you can read books. I've read a lot of books when I was going through a really, really hard time. It's the scariest time of my life. Um, I read like all of the Gabriella Bernstein books, The Universe Has Your Back, um, your attraction is your superpower is it or something like that um there's low uh, judgment detox there was so many things i read the monk who sold his ferrari um i can't think off the top of my head but i read a lot of books but the one thing that i really needed was i needed a change of perspective i needed to see things from like a different angle and that's what um xavier my life coach who i'll i'll tag in this um in case anybody else wants it was somebody that jack found on instagram because um 
I had obviously it's all being good and well. I you know I was I was in a good state of mind at the time, so I was trying to help you out and tr- use all of I don't know the knowledge that I had, and it just I think we needed a different voice, um, and I had had this life coach um, a couple of times just for myself because I'm always looking at different ways and listening to different opinions from different people. And I was like, do you know what? My uh, partner needs to see you. He, and Tay was like, I'm not, you were like against it. Yeah, really against You're like, it. No, no, I'm not. I'm Because the thought of speaking to somebody about my problems and my challenges, I was like, I'm going to cry. Uh, I'm yeah. not going to be able to speak to them. I'm going to be really embarrassed. Like, I don't even know what's wrong with me. So 100%. how am I going to describe it to somebody else? And I was like, I have to get these two people on a call just because I, yeah, I'd never normally force someone to do life coaching. Life coaching is something you should make your own, your on your own decision. But in this case, Tay, I didn't think she knew best. I was like, I need to, I mm. think she needed a bit of external help. So they both, I set them up for a call and <laughs> it's a video call. So Zav, Taylor on the video call, Tay wasn't there and Zav could just hear her absolutely roaring her eyes out. No, he started calling my phone and I was like, nope, not doing it, not doing it, not doing it. And you were Passed cry- you the phone. Well, you were, you, were, you were crying and he... And no, you, I passed you the phone and you oh, answered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I... And you were I like, hi Zav, it's not Taylor, it's Jack. And he was like, what are you doing? I said, oh, um, I just need to put you through to Taylor. She's, I mean, really? she's struggling to even get on the call and I put you through and... I just burst into burst tears. Burst into tears. And my whole session, which was your first session is an hour, I just literally cried the whole time. You couldn't even get out of me what was wrong. I was just like so uncomfortable, like speaking to somebody I don't know, him trying to work out what's wrong with me, me trying to explain. It was just a mess. Yeah, but what I would say, he he instantly put you at ease. Instantly, yeah. didn't he? I remember yeah. him just making a joke. Well, he was laughing. He was like, what, you cry? What have I done? Like, you're crying yeah. and I haven't even started speaking yet. He's, and I was he's like, <laughs> wasn't I? Yeah. And then by the second session, you know, we started to kind of unravel things. And, and um, yeah, it's not something that happens overnight. And you've got to, you've also, alongside having life coaching or therapy, same thing, you know, it's different, but the same thing, getting help, external help. You do actually have to do the work as well. You know, like you have to, go and you know if he's saying you need to go out you can't you need to go and see that person or meet up with that person or just see how it is and change your perspective like you've got to do things that you don't really want to do in order to do it it's not someone you it can't be fixed by somebody else they can give you the new perspective and they can give you advice but then it's ultimately up to you yeah absolutely so life coaching you know self-help reading books um, you know not everyone is gonna um spend the money on life coaching and therapy because it's expensive perhaps there's therapy that you can get through Maybe- yeah perhaps you can get a lot of information from youtube yeah uh, yeah youtube YouTube's and great you know th- there is definitely if you want help you can find it you will find it um it's gotta be and you know some people it's not this kind of help that you need you need medicated help yeah so you know youtube self-help books life coaching therapy i think it's very (laughs) it's funny because i have a lot of um american friends um because of my business and over in america it's like everyone gets therapy it's like such like it? a really normal thing. It's like, you know, when I'm speaking to my friends, they're like, yeah, I've got, I've got my therapist this morning or I've got my therapist this afternoon. And it's like, everybody has it. And it's like, I feel like in the UK, it's definitely more like normalized now and more common now. But we see therapy as like, oh, like, cause when I was having, you know, I'd never had therapy before I had this life coach. And I was like, oh, do, do I really need, do I really need life coaching? <laughs> you know, but then over there, it's like, they just have it just to like, help them and just yeah, to yeah and now that's the way I see it I'm like oh, I want a life coaching call because I want to feel some of that like newness and some of that zest and and like I want to learn something new or I want to learn how to handle this better like sometimes I'll struggle with boundaries and I'll be like I'm going to get a call with Zav and I'm going to say I want to talk more about boundaries and how do I deal with these kind of situations yeah. just like learning and it's but yeah, yeah absolutely a thing is with a life doesn't coach have is, to be when you're in a really not, bad no, place I actually book all of my life coaching when I'm actually in my best state Mm. and then I actually find out more about myself and the reason I mean what I've learned is 
you you can you can like listen to loads of different people on YouTube and loads of different podcasts and things like that. You can connect with certain people. You can just take pieces from each person. Is mm-hmm. what I do. I don't live like my favorite probably person in the world is Tony Robbins, who I've spoken about in a previous podcast. But I, you know, not every single thing he says resonates with me. I then don't go and say, oh, you know, Joe, what I've gone off Tony. I just literally take extract all of the good that resonates with myself. And then I would see other people and listen to different podcasts and things like that. And the good thing that I I like when I listen to people is I like to listen to uh, people older than me because I like to I like to li- to, to invis- I like to see how they are in the future, giving advice to a younger person. I really like my people that I seek you know advice from to be older than myself because I always like to see how it is do you know what I mean does that life make experience. sense life experience yeah I really have appreciation um for somebody who's, for been someone there who's done it further and... in the future than me so yeah somebody I guess who can say oh I've already been through this and made these mistakes so maybe yeah and stop you making them in some yeah. way 100 percent. anyway we're gonna wrap this one up but I hope there's been some value in here i think it's also also really nice to see and hear because i like you know when i see people on instagram or whatever um and sometimes you just don't really know what's what's really going on with that person or you know some of the challenges that they face and i just think it's really reassuring to know that i think everybody is going through something or everybody's been through something or they're finding challenges. It can be in a completely different way. It doesn't have to be mentally. It can be in so many different ways. Um, but I do think it's nice, not nice, because <laughs> it's not nice that people have challenges, no. but it's normal. And it's. I think it's nice to hear that you're not alone in, in facing challenges. They might not be the same as somebody else's, but you know, we all have our own things going on. Yeah, And absolutely. ways to improve in our lives 100 percent. yeah everyone you know we're all human beings everyone has different days weeks years and um it's always just trying to trying to see how you can get yourself into your sort of happier state yeah and it's a work in progress yeah absolutely you know you you get to you you move you grow and you move and you get to a certain place and then it's like you find something else that you want to improve on or work on and it just happens like that it's like life cycles isn't it yeah so anyway, yeah, we hope you've enjoyed episode four and we'll be back again next week. And Thank you very much for listening. Yes, thanks for and listening. we will see you in episode five. And if you want to leave a review, then we'll Feel be very, to, very grateful. I think that one time we should do a, a giveaway for reviews. Yes. But definitely. leave one now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank All you right. very much okay. for listening. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Love you.